Thank you so much for watching the documentary on the life of Moses, prophet. Let me tell you a secret. While working on this, and it took us four years, I asked God to be very close to those who would be watching. And I asked Him to enlighten your mind and mine while working on this specific presentation. And I'm even more excited by those viewers who told me that they need more information concerning the identity of the mystery prophet. Let me briefly tell you what we will be exploring in this lecture. The political landscape at the time of the birth of Moses. Why? Because it must correspond with the time of the mystery prophet, the future mystery prophet. So this is very, very important. Next, we will be looking at the profile of the Pharaoh, that's that Moses I, who ruled when Moses was born. Loretta, my daughter and colleague, says that his profile must also correspond to the profile of the ruler at the time when the mystery prophet was born. So these are fundamental necessities. We will also study the ancient writings, tablets, clay tablets, cuneiform hieroglyphics, to discover the common characteristics of both of these rulers. The first one left some architectural monuments, beautiful ones. Behind, it's still there today in Egypt, can still be seen. The second one should also have monuments that he left behind for generations to come and we must be able to, to see it. So these are very important uh, facts. Karnak Temple, which Tadmosis the I erected. So when you read the history of the Karnak Temple, maybe you've been to the place. Uh, during the time of Moses, it was very, very ordinary. But Tutmosis the I, who was there when Moses was born, beautified the Karnak Temple. And you can check this on the internet. Uh, we will see similar monuments erected by the ruler during the time of the mystery prophet. A 430-year time prophecy was fulfilled on the exact day when Moses led his people out of bondage through the Red Sea. We should also be able to link the coming of the mystery prophet to a time prophecy. Then, then we can do the identification scientifically. The manner in which Moses died here on Mount Nebo should correspond with the manner in which the mystery prophet died. The miraculous way Moses was raised from the dead should also correspond to the way the mystery prophet was resurrected from the tomb. Listen to the prediction made by Moses concerning the future leader and prophet like himself. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, like Moses, from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. We call this type, this is Moses was the type, and now he's referring to the anti-type, somebody even greater than him. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren and will put my words in his mouth. So he'll speak with inspiration and he shall speak to them all that I commanded him. This is very interesting. Many scholars who, s who study religion make use of a very interesting interpretive tool called typology. The entire scriptures are, are full of typology. And if you have this key, man, the book just opens with new excitement. For instance, how did the salvation acts of Cyrus the Great you're looking at his tomb, typify the salvation acts of the future mystery prophet. 
So you, you study the life, the history, the archaeology of Cyrus the Great because he is going to take you to an antitypical Cyrus, a great deliverer. So the two will complement each other. Loretta, please tell us who was buried here in this tomb that you're looking at and the manner in which he treated the children of Israel. This is very, very important. Uh, so Pharaoh commanded all his people, so this was a national decree, saying, every son who is born, you shall cast into the river. That's the Nile. Whenever it speaks of a river, in this context, it's the Nile. And every daughter, you shall save alive. Now the question is, Will the same cruelty be manifested at the birth of the mystery prophet? What did Flavius Josephus write about the way the Egyptians treated the slaves? He, he mentioned the fact that they were very, very cruel. Now the scene of the Pharaonic village in Cairo tells the story of how Moses was rescued by Hatshepsut the daughter of Pharaoh, that Moses one, who wanted to kill all the male babies. But you know, my dear friend, when God has a purpose for our lives, like he had for Moses, he will fulfill that purpose. Nothing will stop him. The helpless little Moses that the mighty Pharaoh wanted to kill became the adopted son of his daughter, and the future deliverer of God's people. There is an enemy that wants to destroy deliverers. We will see a repetition of this at the coming when we come to the history of the mystery prophet. There will be a repetition. Visiting this tomb, I was reminded of one source that said that this specific Pharaoh was so impressed with Moses his daughter's adopted little Hebrew baby, that he wanted him to be the next ruler of Egypt. So Moses could have been the next pharaoh. Now we have to see if we could find another cruel ruler who decreed a similar death decree on male babies somewhere in the future. Now there are only two that fits this description. The one is Astaeches, the king of the Medes, who wanted to kill Cyrus when he would be born. This was a prophecy of <clears throat> 200 years. And eventually this baby was born and he wanted to kill him. The other one is Herod the Great and we'll be concentrating on Herod the Great. We're going to move from types. That's Moses and uh, his ruler of the time, Tatmoses, Astaeches, and the child, Cyrus, that was born. And then we're going to look at Herod the Great. So type, anti-type. So we've got two types to help us to identify the mystery prophet. The first one is Tatmoses, as I said. And the other one is Astaeches, who wanted to kill Cyrus, who would also be a great deliverer. Do you recognize this place? Yes, it's the northern palace of Herod the Great, master builder. But he was a cruel ruler, just as Tatmoses I. So here we have identified the antitypical cruel baby killer in the person of Herod the Great. What Tatmoses I did he also did. So there were two deliverers coming up and these two cruel rulers wanted to kill the babies that would one day do a great job of delivering people out of bondage. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, they came from the Euphrates, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were born in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under 
according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. So, wise men who studied the time prophecies of the coming of the mystery prophet inquired from King Herod, they thought he, he could help them, where this child would be born. He could not answer them, but asked them to come and tell him when they find the place where this future deliverer was born, where to, to find this deliverer, because he wanted to, to come and worship him. This crow in one of the lookouts at Masada told me the rest of the story. The wise men from the east did not come back to Herod to tell him where they found the baby. Like that Moses I issued a decree to kill Moses, the future deliverer. So too did Herod issue a decree to kill another future deliverer, the mystery prophet. But who exactly was this mystery prophet? Can you imagine the weeping of devastated families when the Hebrew male babies were drowned in the Nile? There they would see the little corpses flowing on top of the water. This was a very sad moment in the history of... There's, a, there's an enemy that does not like deliverers. Could we expect the same phenomenon in Bethlehem? Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weep for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. What happened in the time of Moses is repeated again. Now this was the first clue to confirm that Jesus was the mystery prophet to which Moses referred. We've laid the foundation. Up to this day, the world celebrates the birth of the mystery prophet called Jesus. Let us look at the, at the next clue. That Moses I changed the non-impressive Karnak temple into one of the wonders of the ancient world. What about the antitype? Will we see some of Herod's architectural wonders still in our day? And I love archaeology because it confirms many, many ancient writings. Besides the architectural marvel of Masada, millions of visitors come there every year. You can also visit Mukavir, that is in Jordan. This is where John the Baptist was uh, beheaded. Caesarea on the coast, and Jerusalem. This is just a few of some of his, his architectural marvels. There are some more, like the Herodion. At the Kotel Tunnel at Jerusalem, I marveled at this specific one big stone weighing 750 tons. This is part of the modern western wall which surrounded the temple complex. It runs right up to the Via della Rosa. These huge stones cry out. Herod is a counterpart of Tutmosis I. Both of them wanted to kill baby boys who would, according to prophecies, deliver God's people. Scale model of the temple that Herod the Great built. It was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. That Moses once celebrated his victories with an elephant hunt in the area of Nai, near Upper, Upper Maya in Syria. I did research in Syria when it was quite quiet. Would Herod do the same? He returned to Egypt with strange tales of the Euphrates. Now, Amosi was his mother. And he told her and his people, telling of water which flows upstream, that's the Euphrates, when it ought to be flowing downstream. She said to him, Sweetheart, I don't believe a word of what you are saying. You see, the, the, the Euphrates was the first major river which the Egyptians ever encountered, which flowed from the north. 
To them, it was downstream on the now, to the south, which was upstream on the now. So these rivers flowed in different directions, and this was very strange to Tutmosis the first, and we read it in the hieroglyphics. Thus the Euphrates River became known in Egypt as simply inverted water. Do we find also a warlike dictator at the time of the, of the second Moses, time of Christ? Yes. Come with me to the ancient Nabataean city of Petra. Maybe you've been there. In the year 32, BCE, Herod the Great began the war and gained the victory one year later. Like that Moses I, he also advertised his victories. You can read it in ancient literature. What about prophecies which would link the two deliverers, Moses and Jesus, the mystery prophet? Let's begin with the time prophecy concerning the deliverance of God's people in Egypt. It was fulfilled right here at the site that you're looking at, called Afaris, in 1450 BCE. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, on the very same day, it came to pass that all the armies of the Lord went out of the land of Egypt. <clears throat> so here was a prophecy was it fulfilled? Yes. This is the type, Moses. What about the antitype, the mystery prophet? Will we also find a time prophecy concerning the future deliverer, the second Moses, the mystery prophet? Yes. In the book of Daniel, I went to Babylon where he wrote this prophecy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times. Now history tells us uh, when this great prophetic clock of Daniel struck, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River in 26 AD and he began his work of deliverance. What event would take place in the last seven years of his messianic prophecy? It says, and after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. That means the Messiah would die, but not for himself. He died. For you and me. This is a, a reference to his death. But when exactly did this happen? It says, but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. Exactly three and a half years later, Jesus was crucified and died to save the world. The deliverer died. Like the Exodus, this event commemorates the greatest redemption rescue history. On Calvary, he rescued sinners like you and me from the grip of sin, slavery of sin. Let us reverse type antitype sequence to antitype type sequence. So, we will not start with the death of Moses here at Nebu. We will first look at the time and manner in which the second Moses, the mystery prophet, Jesus, died. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Elohi, Elohi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15, 34. Tell me, if Jesus the Antitype died an extremely lonely, God-forsaken death on that Friday afternoon at three o'clock, would Moses the Type also die alone on a Friday? Answer is yes. 
So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And nobody attended his funeral. What a lonely funeral. And what a lonely death. Correspondence between Christ and Moses. Not one of his family or friends attended his funeral service. I think it's, it's, it's quite a challenge to die and there's no one nearby. When did Jesus the antitype die and when was he resurrected? He died on Friday. He was resurrected on Sunday morning while it was still dark. When would Moses the type have died and when would he have been resurrected? Die on Friday, three o'clock, and he would be raised at Sunday morning when it was still dark. This is what the antitop tells us. Moses died on Mount Nebu in the background of the slide, this picture, and he was resurrected at the site in front of us. Now, what would have happened early on Sunday morning concerning Moses, the type? It says in Jude chapter 1 verse 9, Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. So here we have the drama around the resurrection of Moses. Do you think Satan would let his captive Moses go free without a fight? Do you think Christ, the second Moses, the mystery prophet, would be able to defeat the enemy and raise Moses to life? The Apostle Paul says that death reigned from Adam to Moses. He was the first person who was resurrected from the tomb. What happened to the darkness when Christ came down to this area to which we're looking. And remember, he came down in all his divine glory. I think the blinding glory must have changed the darkness of that early morning into blazing daylight beauty. Because this was a triumphant expedition, the first one to be raised from the tomb. Please check the heavenly history channel when you get to the better land to get the full picture. Moses the lawgiver only saw a fraction of God's glory when he received the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai from his hand. But imagine his joy when he saw the face of Jesus, looked into his face in all his glory, in his sinless glorious body at his resurrection. By the way, do you know what the glory of God is? Do you know what the glory of the God the Father is? Their love for you and me. That compassion they have for us. So, so we are going to see all these beautiful uh, characteristics embodied in their face when they would look at us and we would look at them. This is their glory. And if you want to be glorious, be kind and forgiving. The little Moses lived to the ripe old age of 120 years. What a joy Jesus must have experienced when he raised the very first person in the history of the world from the clutches of death. There was an embrace when you study the life of Christ. When he healed someone, he touched them. And when he's going to heal us from death, he's going to touch us, he's going to embrace us. And there was a, an embrace between Christ and Moses. Did Jesus miss his friend when he died? Of course. The day when you die, he will miss you. While on earth Jesus raised young and old from death. 
Will Jesus too, like Moses, be raised from the tomb after his death because he was crucified? And well, there was a great earthquake. Gabriel came down. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. The stone weighed a few tons, but he just took it with a finger and he, he rolled it away. His countenance, Gabriel, was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. You know, this is only one angel and there was an earthquake. Can you imagine when Christ will come with myriads of angels to raise you if you should die or your friends from the tomb? An angel called Christ to come forth from the tomb. My dear, my dear friend, the mystery prophet that Moses referred to is none other than Jesus, the great deliverer, deliverer who's going to de de deliver us from death. Listen to what Jesus said about Moses. And this is very powerful. He, he spoke to the leaders, the religious re leaders of the time. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me. For he wrote about me. So when Moses spoke about the mystery prophet, he spoke about Christ. And when Christ came, he said, Moses wrote about me. So I am the mystery prophet. On top of Sinai, where Moses received God's perfect law of grace, Loretta, my daughter, reminded me of something. There are more than 50 events, and if you should have time, you can look at the series I did on the Exodus, 49 of them. There are more than 50 events, types, in the life of Moses that becomes types of the antitypical work and life of Christ. It is a beautiful story. Please make use of these materials. And does archaeology tell us anything about Jesus? We've looked at prophecy, we've looked at architecture, but what about archaeology? Israeli Museum in Jerusalem. Uh, what does the Latin inscription say? Read it carefully. This very valuable altar dedicated to Caesar Tiberius was discovered in 1961 in the Roman theater at Caesarea. I was so excited when I discovered this discovery. I cannot tell you what it did to me. The first archaeological evidence that there was a pilot, a governor, Pontius Pilate. And when I saw his name on this altar, my heart was strangely warmed. He was the procurator that condemned Jesus to die on a Roman cross. Not long ago, this valuable ossuary, it's a tomb, they took the bones from the sarcophagus when the body disintegrated and then put it in an ossuary, a small tomb like this one. They discovered this in Jerusalem and guess whose name appears on the ossuary? Caiaphas. He was the high priest that encouraged the crowd to keep on spitting in the face of Jesus and keep striking him on that Thursday evening. More than 300 prophecies concerning Christ was fulfilled and most of them during the last few days just before his crucifixion. More than 300 prophecies. So you cannot go wrong. Prophecy says, this is the mystery prophet. This specific showcase in the Israeli Museum displays the only archaeological proof concerning the way criminals were nailed to the cross. My dear friend, the punishment we deserved for our sins, Christ took upon 
himself. This is love, an expression of love that you cannot fathom. He loved you and me so much that he was willing to die in our stead. And when he comes back to our planet, he will take us to a land without conflict, without pain, without misunderstanding, without death. A land where everybody will like you. You will not have enemies. There was no way in which the enslaved Israelites could free themselves from their cruel masters. God pitied them and sent Moses the Deliverer to rescue them from their cruel bondage. You and I also are in bondage. And you know what bondage you are in. And there is no way for us humans to escape from our bondage. This Christ took upon himself to save us. You cannot do it. Maybe you find yourself in a literal prison or in a prison of chronic pain. Maybe you have explored the avenues to escape from the pain caused by loved ones. That's the severest pain. Who can hurt us more than those nearest to us? Maybe this is your prison right now. A victim of rejection. How many kinds of pain are there? And there's a variety of them, all different, but all very unpleasant as you've discovered. Do you long with all your heart to escape from the prison of pain, guilt? The memories of traumatic events have a way to reappear again and again. So we relive the trauma, they say, Please forgive and forget, but only Alzheimer's can do that. We cannot do it. The things come back. Are you longing to be freed from this dark prison cell of emotional misery in which you find yourself? Do you long for deliverance from dependence on damaging substances? Have you hurt someone? Have you deserted your your spouse, disappointed your children, committed crimes? Are you suffering because guilt feelings have imprisoned you? Maybe you have tried in vain to escape from life's prison cells. My dear friend, would you like to be freed from whatever painful situation you are in right now. God sent Moses to rescue two million helpless slaves from the clutches of cruelty and pain. This was the type. Can we expect from Jesus, the mystic prophet, the antitypical Moses, to deliver prisoners like you and me? In the same manner, he sent Jesus to rescue you and me from the prison of whatever. Maybe our fallen human nature, we try to escape this. Khalil Gibran Khalil, I visited his museum in Lebanon. He was also a painter. There's one of somebody that stretches out to new higher moral heights. But a few funny, strange little people are holding him back. I'm looking forward to the final deliverance from my fallen human nature. Listen to the invitation he brought to human slaves during his visit to Nazareth. You know, salvation, deliverance, freedom is what the heart searches for. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Are you poor in many ways, especially spiritual poverty? 
He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. Is your heart broken? To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. May I invite you to allow Jesus, the great deliverer, to release you from your prison cell of pain, of bitterness, of guilt, or a critical spirit, or whatever. He is a deliverer like Moses was. He is a greater deliverer. If you hear his sweet voice, pleading, saving knock, at your heart's door. Please, my dear friend, just open your heart's door and let him come in. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's such a gentleman. He never forces his will upon anybody. If anyone hears my voice, anyone, no matter how miserable you are, how great a sinner you are. That's irrelevant. If anyone hears my voice, maybe you can hear his voice speaking to you and opens the door. I will come in to him and dine with him. The Greek word speaks of a long extended meal, personal. I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. This is the height of fulfillment. When you invite him into your life and have communion with him, he wants to come in, my friend, for a long time, a relaxed, intimate time, he wants to change our failure for his successes. He wants to take our disturbed, worried and guilt-ridden mind and replace it with his costly peace. Do you need peace? He's got it. My friend, please give Jesus the opportunity to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Father in heaven, thank you for a deliverer because we cannot deliver ourselves. Help us to open the door when we hear that knock. In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs> Thank you.